Hi guys, this is Kim and we're going to do a simple newborn composite today. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up Photoshop here. I've already got several of the files that I need already pulled up. And what we're going to do is I took this photograph earlier. This is an egg. It is in some fur and I took this in my kitchen and we are going to place a baby in it. Now, you can get really complicated with these composites or you can not get really complicated with these composites. It is completely up to you. But I want to show you the basics of how you would put a baby in this egg. Um, you can <clears throat> put a blanket in here digitally if you desire. We are not going to do that today. It is a little bit more complicated than what we're going to do. But here's a simple compositing tutorial for you. So I'm in Photoshop CC. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it is not, I did not purchase the standalone Photoshop program. I use the Creative Cloud Photography Suite, which comes with Lightroom as well. Um, it is $10 a month. Um, very affordable, much more affordable than purchasing Photoshop on its own. So if you do not have Photoshop or Lightroom and you just think that you, it's not something you can afford, really, it's 10 bucks a month. Um, and if, if you're able to do that, um, it's a lot more affordable than spending the couple thousand dollars on the Photoshop standalone program. And it's the exact same. What's nice about this Photoshop CC is that you are always updated with the most recent version. So, um, you don't ever have to worry about paying in the future for upgrades or, you know, software updates, what have you. Um, it makes it really nice. Um, and I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me talking and you're ready to get to the composite. I just wanted to make sure that if you do not have Photoshop, um, which is what I mainly work in, then um, you definitely can uh, uh, get it and it's and it's fairly affordable. Let me move my screen over here so you guys can see this, all this jazz over here. Move that side. This side. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start with Chris um, and I am going to select the entire picture. So you can go up here to select and all or you can use your keyboard shortcuts. Control A for select all and Control C for copy or you can go up here to edit and copy. I'm going to go back to my egg photograph and I'm going to create a new layer down here. Layers and masks are a big thing to learn if you're going to do composites. Get comfy with them. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to Control V to paste this in and yes I want to convert this from sRGB to Adobe RGB. <clears throat> And as you can see, the picture of Chris is a lot, it's basically shoved into the egg layer. So it's a lot, it's a lot bigger photograph. So we're going to go ahead and size this up, go up here to the size tool. And we're going to click and then we're going to hold the shift key, shift key on the keyboard. And then we are going to resize this. So why I am holding shift, I am going to drag because we're going to resize this image. You can let go of shift if you just want to move around like this, but if you are resizing, here I'll show you why. If you are resizing and you just grab this with your mouse and you don't hold shift, you're going to have a, you're going to have a squishy baby and nobody wants it to look like that. It just doesn't come out right. I'm going to go up here to cancel. So now we kind of, I'm going to go over here and make the opacity of this layer a little less so I can kind of see the background through it. So I kind of get an idea of where I want this baby. He may still be a little bit too small, so I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to make him bigger. And then I'm going to see the pointer versus the toggle here. I want the toggle because I'm going to move this baby. Move this baby. And actually, I made this baby too big. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to bring this baby down. And then I'm going to bring this baby like this. And we may have to move it again. It you play with it as you go to get this right. So as you can see, bring this down just a little bit, the opacity, you can kind of see where he's going to sit in this egg. I'm going to bring that opacity back up again. Actually, we'll probably leave it down so we can see the egg a little bit. Because now we're going to put a mask over Chris, not over this layer, over this layer. So we're going to, this layer right here, we're going to go down here and we're going to put a mask. Actually, I need to tell it, okay, that is where I want it. All right, now we're going to go down and put a mask on. We're going to go over here to our brushes. I need to make sure though that my colors over here are black and white. So this is actually gray. 
going to go ahead and move this on up to white. So while we're working on a white layer, we want to choose the color black. We'll flip it around here. We get the brush. And I want a soft brush, not a hard brush. And I want my size a little bigger. Now, if you have your keyboard shortcuts, um, you can hit the bracket keys. Um, that's nice. <laughs> if you hit them correctly, they will make your brush bigger and smaller. So you don't have to go up to this menu all the time to size your brush. You can also change the direction of your brush up here as well. Um, that's kind of nice when you're painting grass. Uh, but for now, we're going to take off what we don't want here in the Chris layer. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit, and I want it to be soft. Um, and I'm just going to start painting. I'm going to start taking it away. Kind of being haphazardly right now and just kind of getting all that excess off. All right. And then we're going to have to scroll in to get the, the big stuff. <clears throat> all right. I'm going to crank up my opacity here so I can really see what I'm doing. Small, making my brush smaller by using the bracket keys on my keyboard. We want to bring this eggshell. Find the edge of the eggshell. Where is it? There it is. And we're going to go over the baby a little bit. It's okay. We're going to paint that baby back in. I'm looking for the edge of my eggshell right now. Painting with black on the mask to bring the edge through because that layer is kind of hiding it. <clears throat> okay, so we have a baby and an egg, but it looks funky. He's missing half his head. That's okay. We will fix that. I'm going to go to white, which is to paint on. Black is, if you're working on a white mask, black takes away, white puts it back on, okay? I'm going to stay on my soft brush. I use a soft brush anytime I do hair. I kind of broke the rules today. On an eggshell, you probably should use a hard brush, but because this has so much um, depth of field in it, I really wanted to do soft. It's very blurry in the background. Um, but hair, anytime you're masking around hair, use a soft brush. If you're doing skin or a hard object, um, use a hard brush. Or you can use the brush that you have and go up here and change the hardness. Here, I'll show you the difference. Say we go like this oops, to this baby. See how soft that is? Now if I change this to a hard brush and the hardness is at max, look at that cut. It's very, uh, very, very different strokes. Um, now I want to take that away because I don't like that. Um, I'm going to go up here to my history panel and I can uh, go down to the bottom here and I can get rid of that brush mark and that mark, brush mark. You can also go up to step backwards in case you mess up. So we are going to go back to white, we're going to go to a soft brush, and we're going to scroll way in here. We're going to try to make this brush small. And this is where the work comes in. You are going to trace around. And if you have a Wacom tablet, this makes your life a little bit easier. Um, I'm using a mouse right now because most people don't have a Wacom, and I don't feel like it's fair to teach on one right now. Um, but a Wacom tablet has a pen, and you could do this with a pen, if you can imagine the difference if you're not familiar with the technology. Um, just got to get in there. Um, I'm going to make my brush bigger. Gotta fill this in. Scroll up on my baby. We want to get this as finely detailed as possible. And I'm not going to be too anal about it today, guys, because I don't think you really want to watch a video of me coloring in baby skin for 45 minutes, but sometimes that's what it takes. You've really got to scroll in and uh, get your details in order to make this look, I don't dare say realistic with this one because it is a baby and an egg, but to make it look its best. You know, some co composites are about being realistic and other composites are about just making them blend right. The biggest thing with composites is um, lighting. Um, and blending. Lighting, blending, and shadows, I should say. I'm sure there's other key factors there that somebody will chime in and tell me, but um, I find whenever I do a composite, those are the main things. Where, where's your light source coming from, okay? Um, match it up with whatever scene you're putting them into. If not, create some fake light. 
so that it ma makes sense. You want to make sure your tones throughout the image, like this baby is really red and this background's kind of cool. Kind of a, the baby has a red tone and the background has a blue tone. We're going to fix that. Um, and shadows. When you go to put somebody in a new background, this one not so much because I took the egg on a blanket and I used both pieces. Now if I had removed the egg from the blanket, then we would have had to put some shadows under the egg or around the egg. So it looks like it belongs there. Anytime you put something on <clears throat> on something that wasn't originally there, it has shadows. Um, and I, I'll tell you, shadows is the hardest thing, I think, for everybody. And it was for me for a really long time. Um, I hit a little boopy over here. While I'm coloring here, I'm just going to try to talk to you guys about some things. Um, I just started watching shadows, watching light. How does the sun fall on things? Which side of the person is the shadow on? Really had to start understanding how shadows really work in real life um, <clears throat> before I could put this into practice with composites. Um, and I still don't get it right every time. Some things, some composites are extremely difficult uh, to get your shadows right. And I will do a tutorial um, strictly on shadows one of these days because it's a it's a pretty hot topic. Um, there's lots of ways to go about it, but it, it can be a challenge. So let's scroll out here and see where we're at. This is what I've got so far. And remember, always scroll out because it's hard to tell from where you're at sometimes um, what it actually looks like. So we're just going to keep plugging along here. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit because you guys kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. And this isn't going to be perfect. And I'm using a mouse. But you're going to get the idea of what, what it takes to get this baby in this egg. <clears throat> We've got some blanket funkiness here. Make sure. And you know, if you hit the little um, right next to your bracket keys, there's a little line key or a semicolon. If you hit that, it's going to make everything that you've painted turn red. So you can kind of see where you're at. You can see I missed something. Look, whoops. Yeah. I missed something there. Look, I take that out. Oh, that didn't work. I wonder why that didn't work. Oh, because it's inverted. That's why. Okay. I'm going to make sure we stay on our layer here. that back in. All right, so basically we're just going to keep keep going along here, um, taking this out. <clears throat> you can either take the blanket out or you can leave the blanket in. It's totally up to you on what you do. You can get really close and put this blanket all the way in there. Really have the blanket show right here. The baby's got a shadow. I'll need to continue that shadow down through here. Again, with the with the shadows. And I am not doing a perfect job here, guys. I would be scrolled all the way in like I was if, if I was doing this for a client. <clears throat> I almost want to give you the general idea of how to go about this. Now, here's a decision that we need to make. We can either remove this blue <clears throat> or we can leave the blue in there. I think I kind of want to remove it. Whoopsies. But you're going to have to watch how you do this. <clears throat> to make sure that blanket, the transitions look right. It can get a little tricky. I did not cut this baby out of this image, so I uh, simply brought the whole image over. But you can cut the baby out. I mean, that's it's totally up to you. But uh, I did not. You're gonna lose some things, like some strands of hair. It's kind of part of it. 
Um, that's kind of our progress so far. I'm not really sure I'm liking this eggshell right here. I'm probably going to do something different with that. Um, it just kind of looks funky. I'm just bringing it around. Bringing it around. I need to fine tune that. Let me get on in there. I mean, this is this is the gist of it, guys. Scrolling out, making my brush bigger. Catching where I didn't get it taken away good enough. All right. Don't want to leave any haloing. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> but like I said, I'm doing this really fast. So um, you would get scroll in right here and get really close to that baby. Um, I don't like, see, hmm, I don't like that shell the way it is. I don't know if I can. See, that's just going to bring the blue back. I'm not sure I'm, let's bring his hair like this. <clears throat> that's a little bit better yeah we need to take that blue out though sometimes when you shoot stuff to use whoopsies um, you don't really realize the problems that you're going to encounter when doing a composite after you've shot the photograph until you go to do it and then you're like oh I should have taken a different angle or I should have done this differently kind of just things you learn along the way when you're doing composites. All right, we'll leave that shell there. If you scroll out, it's not that big of a deal. It just looks like the shell. Okay, I will probably... I'm not sure what I'll do right here. Um, you, there's a couple different options that you have <clears throat> for right there because you can see the green through. You can either leave it be. Most people aren't going to notice it. Um, you can try to to clone some of that blanket in you can try to ring you can even actually you can go up here to your brush and change the opacity and bring it down a little bit so it like lightly comes through so you don't get around all your fur um, it's a pretty light because that fur is on top of it so you want a hint of blue coming through there but you don't want a ton <clears throat> so it's not green if that if that makes sense and this looks weird. I think I've messed up over here. Um, I think there's more shell there. Oh, see, you got to remember you change your opacity because when you start brushing on something else and it doesn't show up, that's why. <laughs> nope, the shell ends right there. So I'm just going to go right back over that. Take it right back out of there. All right, <clears throat> so you guys get the, the general gist of this, okay? We now have a baby and an egg. Is it perfect? No, um, but for <clears throat> the purposes of this tutorial, it's doing pretty good. Now, we have two layers here. I'm going to go up and I'm going to add. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure I'm on this top layer so that it adds it on top. I'm going to go up to Layer, Adjustment Layer, and Curves. And I'm going to create a clipping mask. And what this does is what it says. It's going to clip it down to the layer underneath it, which is the baby layer. So I'm going to check this and I'm going to label it baby. I'm going to hit OK. And here comes the fun part. Curves is a very, very powerful tool. So we can darken this baby. We can lighten this baby. I think that he needs to, the highlights and shadows, the highlights need to come down just a little bit. Okay. And we've moved him a little bit. The shadows come up a little bit. And he is, let's see how red he is. I think he's pretty red, but let's see how red I am. Yeah, he's pretty red. So, <clears throat> to take down the red channel, we're going to pull down just a little bit. Let's see how blue he is. He's pretty blue. Which, when I move the blue, naturally, he's going to go green. And let's bring down the green a little bit. I still think he's got a little bit of green in him. you get the idea and if you wanted a little bit more warmth you could you could add it I mean see it it really makes a huge difference here it's a very powerful tool 
So <clears throat> we can go to this layer and we can go, um, we can add, if we, if we want to make this blend, you can select your layer and you can go up here and hit add an adjustment layer of curves, clip it down. You don't have to do anything to this layer, but you can just go and see like how much of the background is has red in it because sometimes I can't look at something and go that's really warm or that's really cool I'm just sometimes I just can't do it so if you want to go in here and see how much blue and how much red and how much green is in here so that you kind of have an idea of what you're inserting has and then you can just come over here and hit delete on your keyboard and delete that um, this baby probably needs a little bit more li little bit more more red um in my opinion uh let's go here i took it down but then all right <clears throat> so i'm gonna go and i have lens filters and we're gonna put a filter over this entire image so i'm gonna open up my lens filters hopefully they play hopefully they play correctly sometimes they don't like to And a lens filter is exactly what it is. It's a filter over the entire image. They work really, 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 really well um, to blend subjects. And it's not going to run correctly. Okay. Hang on. Now let's see if we can get this to run correctly. Sometimes actions are a little funky. There we go. There we are. Okay, so you can choose these individually and kind of see what it does. And keep in mind, it uh, you can change the opacity on these. But that gave Dusty Road. It is changing the color toning on your entire image. Hello, purple. Lilac. Warm light, which is actually kind of nice. Blue. Vanilla. You can also stack these if you desire. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to do, do kind of drastic here. I'm going to turn, choose this purple, okay? Now you have your lens filter. I just went ahead and closed my group. But I'm going to go up here to opacity, and you can really tone this down. You don't have to leave it at that crazy purple. Um, but this gives your photograph, when you're doing a composite, an overall um, continuity to it. Um, so that all of your colors blend better. Um, <clears throat> and there you have it. We have a baby in an egg that is on a blanket. Um, what I would do from here is I I always save one version of this as a Photoshop document so that I can open it back up with all my layers and then I will save it as a JPEG um, at 12 compression. Um, so it has very little compression. Um, so that way if you come back to this tomorrow and you're looking at it going, wow, I missed a spot. I didn't mask here, or I don't really like the lens effects. You can. Um, you can also do some shadowing over here. You can see here, the burn tool. Go back to the background here. We don't want a feather brush. That's funny. Go to a soft brush. Dodging and burning is, is kind of an art in itself, but if you want to make some shadows over here. Um, our exposure is pretty low, so let's bump it up. If you want to darken this, you can. If you want to darken, you know, the baby, you can. Um, actually, that won't show up on there. I'm like, why is this not working? You need to be on the correct layer. So um, you can do this, you can do this on the baby. Um, you come over here choose burn come in here and make it darker you can make it darker all the way around the baby for this shadow bring out this shadow a little bit more but at, here's a good example this baby is on this blanket this the, the baby on the blanket is not composited well this is a contact shadow right here where that baby is contacting the blanket so you want to make sure that your shadows were always darkest where they first hit and then they get lighter as they come out. So you can add, you know, a shadow here if you so desired. Um, that one's a little pretty dark, but you change, you can change your exposure right here. Um, you can also do different layers um, 
a layer for your burn layer and a layer for your dodge level dodge layer if you desire but that is the basics um there's some other things that could be done to this we could do some frequency separation to his face um get him smoothed out a little bit um we could uh, tone down the entire image. We could run some more actions on it. But I wanted to get out a simple um, compositing tutorial for you guys today. So uh, thanks for listening, you guys. Um, and don't forget, we will be having a, another giveaway in January where we are going to give a year's membership to the Creative Cloud Away. Um, members of the group <clears throat> will be eligible to enter. Um, so keep your eye out for that. I'll post that in the next week or two. You guys have a great week.